Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number two for chapter six and the topic for the chapter is um, systems of two linear differential equations. In this video we will do some review of matrices. Okay, so a matrix of size m times n is the following. It's a rectangular shape of a collection of um, values in the following way. Let's call the matrix capital A and we arrange it in um, this way. And then you have all the elements A11, A12, all the way to A1n, so n columns here. And then you will have uh, A11, A21, all the one down to a m1 m rows here so total number of elements is m times n another way of writing this would be just put in the bracket a of i j and then one specifies i runs from 1 to m and j runs from 1 to n okay in this discussion we will only consider square matrices that is m equals m so this is actually a square okay and in particular we'll focus our attentions for um, n equals 2 and n equals 3 sometimes mainly for n equals 2. okay some basic operations of matrices one can perform are the following so let now capital a and capital b be two square matrices of size n the first operation is the addition. You can perform A plus B and then all you do is add up the in each element. So let's say A have elements A, I, J in the position I, J and B has elements B, I, J. Then the resulting matrix in the position I, J will have the element A, I, J plus B, I, J. The next one is the so-called scalar multiple. So here alpha is a scalar number and you can multiply alpha with the, the matrix A. And then what it does is that you multiply every element in the matrix A with the same constant alpha. The third operation is called the transpose. So, which is written as capital A with a capital T on the superscript. Okay, that means it's also a square matrix, um, but where you would switch the elements A I J and the A J I, you switch their positions. So, obviously, you if you transpose a transposed matrix, you get it back because if you switch ij and then switch it back again you get the same matrix okay the next one is the product of two matrices let's say a capital a times capital b would equal to a matrix let's call it c and the element is cij then the element cij is the inner product of the ith row vector of A with the jth column of B. Okay, so given an example for a smaller 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 2 matrix, let's say A looks like this and then the B matrix looks like that. Then um, what is this element A the in the product the put in position 1, 1? That will be take this vector AB and dot product this vector so you will get AX plus BU that's what you will get here and then let's say this element here would be the inner product of this vector AB with YV so AY plus BV that's what you hear and so on and so forth now the advantages of using matrices is that we probably have learned earlier in simultaneous in linear equations that we can express systems of linear equations using matrix product 
Okay, let's see, we have this example. Um, three equations, three unknowns, x1, x2, and x3. And then um, each one has different coefficient to add up. And then there's the right-hand side for each of the equation. How can we write it into matrix and vectors? Well, um, it's actually um, a very simple process to do it. So um, you collect the unknowns as your unknown vector, x1, x2, and x3. And then you will have a matrix standing in front of it to multiply with it. And for this matrix, you will, um, for each row matrix, you will just collect the coefficients in front of the x1, x2, and x3. So for example, the first row will be 1, negative 1, 3. And that's what you put here. And then for the second equation, second row would be 2, 0, 5, because there's no x2 here. And that's what you put. And then for the last one, you will get 0, 1, negative 1, the last row. Okay. And then that will equal to a vector, and which is just the vector from the right-hand side. So you copy down 4, 0, and 7. Okay, so here is another example of doing this um, in um, for um, systems of ODEs. Let's say we have some general form, x1 and x2. So x1 prime is some function a times x1 plus b times x2 plus a g1 of t. And then x2 prime is some function c times x1 plus d times x2 plus a sum function g2 of t. And we wish to express this in um, matrix and vector form. Okay, so first the left hand side can be written as a unknown vector containing x1 and x2 as its entrance. All these are column vectors. And then the derivative of the vector when that just means um, each element inside is being differentiated. Okay, and then um, the right hand side we treat it differently. So the first um, two terms of each that will be treated together, and then this term with the g will be treated separately. So what we have here would be um, we will break this up as a matrix times a vector. So x1, x2 is your unknown vector. And then um, you have a matrix where you collect the coefficients in front of this x1, x2 into the position in the matrix. So here we'll have a and b, they're functions of t. And then for the second one, we'll have c and d, we'll put here. And then this um, two terms is expressed as this matrix times the vector. Okay? And then plus and the, the term g's are collected as a vector g1 and g2. Now let's review some properties of matrices. So the first property is that there is an identity matrix, capital I. And capital I is a diagonal matrix with all ones along the diagonal. And then it has the following property. If the A is a square matrix with the same size, then A times identity equals identity times A equals A. So multiplying with the identity on the left or on the right does not change a thing. And second, there is the determinant of a matrix, that A. And uh, it has a complicated definition. We will not go into that. This is taught in a course on um, matrices separately. Let me just um, review that um, for 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 matrices. In that case, you can write them down and explicitly, not, not that complicated. So for 2 by 2 matrix, it's the product of this diagonal, A times D, minus the product of the other diagonal, minus BC. And then for a 3 by 3 matrix, and one can um, compute them in kind of a similar fashion, and uh, you um, you will have six terms, three terms with positive sign, three terms with negative sign. Those are positive signs, you can start from the diagonal line, A, V, Z, that's what you will get. And then you move it lower, 
then you get u times y, but you always want a triple um, multiplication, then you pick the last one term here. So u times c, which is this one, and then you move one down, but then you need to have the one that with two terms, and then you pick these. So x, b, w, which is here. And those that you obtain by going downward will be positive. Uh, and then you have the other three terms which carries the negative sign. One can start from the real diagonal up one here, x, v, c, which is here. And then you move one lower, you get y, w. And then, then you pick the last one with just one, so y, w, a, that's here, which will be negative. And then you move one lower, you have a z, and then you need to pick one that has two elements, u and b times u, and that's that. Okay, so um, that's a quite um, fast way of memorizing the determinant of a three by three matrix, which can be um, handy. Okay, and the next concept is the inverse of a matrix, of a square matrix. Okay. So A, the inverse of A, you can write as inverse of A. You can also write it as A to the power negative 1. And you have the following property. A inverse times A is identity. And A times A inverse is also identity. OK, so um, the last one is to um, show um, when the A matrix is invertible so that you can solve the system AX equal B. There are many um, equivalent statement and they all in the end um, mean the same thing, but uh, they can be useful because some of them at, in some situations are easier to verify than the other. Okay, so on first, okay, so A is invertible. That statement is equivalent to a is non-singular, that's just the definition. And the third one, this determinant of A is not zero. And then the fourth statement, all the row vectors in A are linearly independent. And the fifth statement, all the column vectors in A are linearly independent. And the last one is all eigenvalues of A are non-zero. Okay, so um, we have not reviewed um, this concept, eigenvalues, and the corresponding eigenvectors, which will be very useful in the study of systems of ODEs. So um, next video, we will focus our attention on that and do a review of those concepts and how to compute them. Okay, so all right, so that's all for um, this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.